This is footage of British soldiers on operations in Afghanistan in 2007. They have planted a small amount of explosive to gain entry to a compound. There's no sound recorded here, so you won't hear the blast, but if you watch closely, you will see it. Look at the soldier standing in the doorway. Just for an instant, the dust on his helmet and his body armour is lifted into the air. Explosions big and small are part of the business of warfare, but even if they don't throw soldiers across the street, they will rattle the cells inside their heads. The scientists call that mild traumatic brain injury. So the danger of uh, repetitive trauma is that often it can be quite uh, mild, you know, minor hits or minor pressure waves, and uh, uh, you think that everything is fine, uh, why the repetition of this trauma over time uh, they can have a profound uh, effect on, uh, on the brain. Uh, even if maybe it's not as frightening, as dramatic as a one single severe hit to the head. It was so easy for the IRA and others to mount ambushes to attack you. So, you know, a 500 pound bomb in a culvert mine was you know, commonplace. More than 50 years ago, Tom Clark was a young soldier serving in Northern Ireland. His base was the target for mortar attacks. The massive explosion, my rifle got blown out of my hand. It does feel as if you hold every organ in your body is trying to, trying to escape it or try to get out of your body, which is a horrible feeling. It's, it's really, it's hard, it is very difficult to explain. Tom contacted us after our first report on mild traumatic brain injury a few weeks ago. He recognised the symptoms we described. For weeks and weeks afterwards, I kept having these massive headaches. And from then, for about a year afterwards, I don't know, it just became a blank to me. Uh, my wife said I started drinking heavily. I started being argumentative and she said I was a holy horror. Campaigners for better treatment for brain injuries say there needs to be a big change in the way the military handles service personnel who've been exposed to explosions and not just on the battlefield. Brain injuries are rarely documented. Their exposure to repetitive blast to blast overpressure is almost never documented. And so we don't know what we're dealing with. These are people who have fought for us to keep us safe. And they went through some pretty extraordinary things that caused brain damage. They are dying. Some of them are dying by suicide because they aren't getting the right diagnosis or we don't have the right treatment for them. Uh, they deserve our attention and support and we need to work hard and quickly to make sure that we can help them when they need us. Diagnosis of blast-related traumatic brain injury also remains a medical challenge. That's largely because microscopic study of the structure of the brain can only really be done post-mortem. I think brain donation is a powerful gift. It's a legacy. It allows individuals who have suffered during life to essentially continue our understanding of these conditions for which at the moment the recognition of the total extent, the severity, the nature of it remains suboptimal. We are still learning about the effects of warfare on those who wage it. Sometimes the damage done is buried along the pathways of the mind that make us who we are. Before it can be fixed, it has to be found. Geraint Vincent, ITV News.